Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I created this look right here. I posted this on my Instagram stories on Saturday and I had a couple questions of how I created the look and what shadows I was incorporating, all that kind of stuff, and I figured I have a little bit of extra time right now so I would sit down and share with you guys how I created the look. It does incorporate two of my Pan Those Eyeshadows products and it also incorporates one shadow from my Pan That palette and I think I'm going to just change the look a little bit just because I really want to play with some coral in that look as well. So it's going to be primarily that periwinkle blue purple kind of look with a hint of coral because it is the first day of spring and I am using my Nabla Soul Blooming palette so I just wanted to play with the matte coral in this palette as well, but otherwise it's gonna be virtually the same thing, so you can definitely recreate it with shadows that you have at home. But anyways, let's just hop right into it. I'm really looking forward to it, so let's just hop right in. Jumping into the Nabla Soul Blooming palette, I'm gonna be using this coral shade right here called Bolero. It's a beautiful matte color, and I've been craving using this color for quite some time, so I'm just gonna use a small fluffy brush, and I'm gonna apply that to the outer portion of my crease as well as above my crease. I've never really, wow, never really used this shade for this kind of like application, but I'm excited to give it a shot um, and I'm really excited to see how this plays off of all the rest of the colors. I just can't do the same makeup look twice so I always have to change something about the look like I just I don't have it in me to want to replicate the same look when I can play around with more colors and more shadows from my collection so we'll just see how this ends up playing off of that. This is so pigmented. Nabla just kills it when it comes to mattes. They just Oh, they're so like delicious and just perfect. I don't know. I don't know how else to describe them. Just so good. I don't want to bring it all the way into the inner portion because I want to pop this periwinkle shade there. And I'm just going to use another small fluffy brush for that. But this one is a little bit more tapered and a little bit smaller so I can be a bit more precise in my application of this one. I'm just going to pop it right onto that inner portion just above my crease. And I'm really gonna build it up because I want this to be super pigmented and then kind of fade into that coral color. So I'm going a little bit more light-handed just on that transition there. And then I'll take that other brush. I'm not putting any new product on it. I'm just gonna try to buff the two together. I don't want it to get muddy though. So that is something I'm trying to be a little bit weary of for sure. But I'm gonna just build it up right here and pull it maybe a little bit farther out. I don't have anywhere that I'm going today. Um, school is canceled for the rest, well not canceled, but it's moving to online for the rest of the semester. So I can just go a little bit crazy with my makeup. I think this is the perfect time. If there's any like makeup looks that you've had in mind for a while and you just haven't had the right setting or anything to play with those colors and those textures, now's the time, just get creative and like, hone in and build your skills. I think this is just the perfect timing. So as much as it's a shitty situation that's going on right now, um, I'm just going to take it as an opportunity to do the things that I have really been neglecting, which includes sitting down and doing these kinds of videos. So I'm really happy to have a little bit of space and time to do it and make the most of a bad situation. I'm hopping into my Pan That Palette. This is the Cap On D Shade and Light Eye Palette. I'm going to be using the black right here, which is called Shax, that deep black shade. And I have it packed into a dense shader brush already because I was about to do this without even explaining myself, but I'm just really working it into the brush and then tapping off as much as I possibly can. And I'm just going to really, really just cover my entire lid with this. And I'm going to build it up because I do want it to be quite black. I'm going to be using a duochrome on top of it. And I really want that deep black shadow underneath. I think I'm also going to just kind of take this out a little bit. I'm kind of nervous about this, but we're just playing around. So I think I'm going to take this 
almost create a little bit more of like a cat eye kind of shape. That's what I did um, when I did the other look. But this is definitely not going to be the same exact same look. I'm just going to take a clean blending brush as well, a nice like small blending brush, and I'm just going to buff the edge just a little bit so it's not so uneven. Definitely the star of the show is going to be this shadow right here. This is Cleona Cosmetics Crystalline. It's a beautiful like shifty eyeshadow and you guys know if you've been watching my pan those eyeshadows, I've definitely kind of felt a little bit burnt out by this eyeshadow, but I'm really excited to play with it in today's look, especially considering that I actually painted my nails using that eyeshadow last night as well. So I did a black base coat and then I literally used an eyeshadow brush and painted this eyeshadow all over my nails and then I sealed it all in with my Holo Taco linear top coat. So it has a ton of shine. It definitely is a sheer application of this eyeshadow on my lids. It definitely does not like pull like this, but it was a lot of fun to play with it. So anyways, off topic, but I don't know. I really thought it was kind of cool. So I'm gonna be using my e.l.f. glitter glue to just adhere the eyeshadow properly and to give it a lot more impact. So I'm just going to be using my ring finger to apply this. I'm going to try to be as precise as I can be. Oof, this is nerve wracking. So basically once I have applied the glitter glue, I'll end up just smushing it between my fingers so I never get too much onto my lid at once. And then I'm going to just pop it on the majority of my lid and try to keep it within that shape as much as possible. But I also am intending to kind of bring a little bit of the shimmer up into my crease. So not a problem at all. I'm going to then just quickly wipe off my finger and I'm going to use my finger to apply this eyeshadow before my camera battery dies. So I'm just gonna pop this on while it's still a little bit tacky. Oh my God, I love it. I love it so much. So I've got a pretty good base of everything that I want. I just want to refine it a little bit more. So I'm going to go back into Flowery, that periwinkle kind of shade, on the exact same fluffy brush. And I'm going to bring that right through my crease and actually try to meld the crease to my lid color a little bit better using this. I don't know why I like to do this. Like I did this look on last Saturday and I did this exact same thing to really blend that black into my crease. I just had, instead I had um, the bronzer shade from my Charlotte Tilbury Duo. That's what I had in, in place of what this coral is, but virtually it was the exact same look. You could definitely use a bronzer or a nice, just like transition, like more cool tone brown, something like that to create more of an everyday look, but I really want that coral in there. So I'm just melding everything together and using the exact same brush, I'm just gonna go into that Cleona single and I'm going to really pack it into the tip of the brush and I'm going to run that again through my crease right over top of that periwinkle shade. I don't know why recently I've been loving a little bit of shimmer in the crease, but it just, it makes everything just blend so, so, so seamlessly. And for me, having hooded eyes, I find it, it allows me to actually really bring that color up. And then I'm just gonna go in with that exact same brush that I used at the very beginning to kind of meld everything together. And I'm just going to do that the exact same thing, just blend everything together using that brush. And next I'm gonna use Cakewalk from ColourPop. This is unfortunately not a shadow that's available right now. This was a part of their third birthday collection, but it basically is like the muted version of Crystalline. This has the slightest bit of blue in it. It is predominantly purple, but it just plays so well off of the colors in Crystalline. So I'm just going to, again, use my ring finger to apply this and I'm going to pop it right into the center of my lid and then use my middle finger to really blend it out so that there is no definitive 
start or end to that. I don't want it to really read as a halo eye kind of technique. I just want it to be more of a spotlight. So that when the light hits this eyeshadow, it just has even more dimension and shift. And then lastly, I know this is really weird, but I've been doing this a lot lately. Once I just kind of clean off my fingers, I'm just going to very lightly meld everything into my crease. So that that shimmer is definitely like kind of set into place and it kind of just makes everything a little bit messy in a way that just meshes together so perfectly well. I don't know why, but I've been loving doing that lately. <laughs> and I feel like it just makes it so that you can't tell where the beginning or the end of any shadow is and I really quite like that. So most of my makeup is done now, but I did want to finish up the eyes with you guys. I'm going to be just doing a light dusting of bronzer on the lower lash line. So I'm going to be using the bronzer from my Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow. This beautiful, like it's slightly cool. It's kind of a neutral bronzer shade and I'm using this brush. I'm obsessed with this brush. I feel like I've mentioned it before, but it's just a slightly angled, um, definer kind of brush. This is from La Butte Soy. La Butte Soy. Oh my god, I'm so bad. But this came in a brush set by the brand and I love it for my lower lash line. It just hugs the lower lash line so perfectly. So I'm just going to dust this onto my lower lash line and kind of try to almost meld it into the lid as well. Of course, if you're going to kind of try to recreate this look, if you have the bronzer both in the outer portion of the crease and on the lower lash line, it'll feel really nice and cohesive, but I don't know why. I, I just really wanted to play with some coral today, okay? <laughs> Since I'm using this little duo right now anyways, I'm just gonna grab another brush from that set and I'm gonna go into the highlighter side. And I'm gonna pop this into my inner corner, really diffused. I'm also going to run this Annabelle Waterline Luminous Eyeliner in the shade Champagne. I'm going to put this in my waterline. You guys are going to see like how um, patchy it kind of looks. Like, does that even make any difference? And to finish off the look, I'm going to be using the CoverGirl Lash Blast Fusion. That is so hard to say. And I'm just going to be putting this on both my upper and lower lashes. I'm going to do probably a couple coats of this as well. I never do my mascara on camera because it kind of grosses me out when I like look back and see mascara being applied to my own lashes. I don't know why that is. Like, it gives me the creeps. <laughs> I guess because I can see it's getting so close to my eye. I really don't know, but yeah. I don't mind watching other people. Like it kind of weirds me out when I see other people applying mascara, but I don't hate it as much as I hate watching myself. But I gotta get over that because that doesn't really make any sense. It's completely, completely absurd. And then for the lower lashes, once I feel like there's like no product really on the wand, I'm just going to use it on its side and kind of brush it over my lower lashes. I feel like I like to have some definition on my lower lashes, but lately I've been not really wanting to have a ton of volume or length there. Just that deepness of having defined black lashes is all I really want. So I'm just trying to really be as light as possible in this application. I really am so happy with the finished look, but that is absolutely everything for today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Stay safe and stay healthy out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.